Good evening, Ohana and women who are gathered together. We're going to have a wonderful evening, and I got your questions quite late this afternoon, so I may not be able to cover all of them, but I prepared a lesson for us, and it's about being confident. So let's uh, sing that song, Psalm 46, 1. I have to redeem myself because the other night I tried to sing it, and I forgot some of the words, okay? Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore I will not fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And Father, I just thank you that you have kept us this far. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our friend. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for making the rooms that people are gathered in, the homes, their bedrooms maybe, their living room, Lord, a holy place by inviting your presence there. And I pray that our hearts be re able to receive what you're going to speak to us tonight. We pray, Lord, for Vivian Gabin's family. She went to be with the Lord this morning. And I know that heaven received her, and we're so glad that she knew Jesus. But comfort the family and help us to be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Because it's a very good lesson, and because we need the Word of God, I want you to get your pencil and paper. I'm going to give you this Bible scramble verses first. And because we're ministering to some ladies who may very, be very new in the Lord, uh, I want to give you these scriptures because, you see, somebody asks, you know, what about religious traditions or, you know, I was brought up this way and, and I don't know what to believe and all. Let me say this. There are so many religions in the world. Everybody thinks they have the right religion. But in Christianity, we believe that the only truth is in the Bible. And remember, we started on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell on the 120 in the upper room when Jesus had gone to heaven. And he says, wait in Jerusalem until I fill you with the Holy Spirit. Then you go out and evangelize the world. So they were there and the Holy Spirit came and they spoke in other tongues and they were filled with that power and they went healing the sick and casting out devils and saving souls. Well, they went on and so we were one, okay? But then, you know, like a lot of things, as time goes on, little tradition here, little tradition there, little change, little interpretation of this. And the first big split was between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Western Orthodox Church and the Eastern one says, we believe our priests can get married. We don't believe in having statues and that, those are idols. And so there was a split in the church. Then later on, about 1500s or 14 or 1500s, and we had the big Protestant and Catholic or universal church split because um, Martin Luther, as we know, as a reformer, and when he studied to be the priest, he found things in the Bible that he had not been taught, like justification is by faith alone. That means you don't have to buy indulgences. You don't have to say many prayers. You, by faith alone in Jesus, you can be saved. And so there was a great big split again. And then, of course, later on, it got, you know, different splits it within each of the denominations, and you go all over the world. I've been to Brazil, and the uh, Catholic Church in Brazil is different from the Catholic Church in the Philippines and in the United States. And then in the Protestants, of course, we get the Baptists, and we get the Pentecostals like us, and also. Anyway, there's a lot of interpretations, but the only truth, remember, is God's word. Because in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And we all Christians believe it was Jesus. And then Jesus says in 
John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the word is the truth. It's not anybody's interpretation. So even if I say something that you disagree with, go into the word. You need to, this is why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit ourselves, because he will tell you what the truth is. He wants to guide you into all truth. And then, of course, we need to remember that uh, don't put your confidence in man, you know. Sometimes they're very charismatic and they can convince you of this and that. Don't be fooled by that because only the truth will take us to heaven. And all of us have come out from, you know, religious um, backgrounds, cultural religion that taught us this or that. But I think, I'm telling you, Saturday night, I don't know if all of you want to turn it, tune in, but my church people... I want you to tune in because I am learning something. You know, my church people know that I'm writing a book, but let me tell you this. I know they're tired of hearing me say I'm not finished, but things that I researched and said was going to perhaps come soon when this COVID-19 came and things changed quickly and the whole world was shut down and we were hearing things. I tell you what, when I study now, I just want to cry. I've been trying to revise my material to make it understandable because some of the things that I said will be happening, perhaps I can see it lining up for this to happen, is happening right now. If you watch the news, let, let me, before I give you the scripture, talk to my people because I want everybody to watch on Saturday night. I'm going to answer some questions, but I got some of this information from Channel 29, Kalu Channel. It's a Calvary Chapel channel. And I was listening to the Calvary Chapel Connie Ohe pastor who was brought up in the Middle East, had been on drugs, came and got radically transformed and born again. And he's been into prophecy. And he said something that really made my hair stand up. And he said something about the House Bill number 666. Six. This is the United States House bill. It's the COVID-19 guidelines. Doesn't that spook you out? And uh, you can Google that or you can watch that. I, I recommend you watching that because he's so knowledgeable. But he's telling about things that in the book that I was going to write, you know, my book is kind of obsolete. It's it's happening right now. And so I'm going to tell you more about that on Saturday night. And if you are interested in that, my people who are, you know, born again already and you, you know it all because you learned it from me. Anyway, um, you want to get more about this end time thing, look up on citizenmedia.news, citizenmedianews.com. And look for Dr. Yvette, I-V-E-T-T-E, Lozano's talk, L-O-Z-A-N-O, Dr. Yvette Lozano. She was a surgeon and a researcher during the AIDS thing, and she has been treating the COVID-19 patients, and she says all of the guidelines they're given are totally unacceptable because she has treated her patients with what the president said is okay, and he was taking it himself. I cannot pronounce that. But she said that they're withholding that, and they always say we've got to test more, test more, because they're getting into some stuff that I cannot even understand. But if you're interested, a dynamic um, presentation, and she's trying to get People in the CDC, be careful. Just because they're in the government things, it doesn't mean that you know we should believe them. And the National Institute of Health. And then, of course, the World Health Organization for the United Nations. They are bad news. And let me say this again. I keep saying, let me say this. But, you know, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because there's so many lies going like this that we don't know who to believe unless we have the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. So for those of you who are new, don't be afraid because you're a little baby. It's my older ones that know the Bible and 
no one is coming and they're not sharpening up. I'm concerned about them because in, in the report here is they say that they're looking for the um, vaccine to, you know, treat the COVID-19 people and it's going to probably be the end of the year. But what there's the people who know the inside thing is they're waiting for the governments to collapse the economies to collapse so that the one world government can come in and they think it might be by the end of this year. So we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be an alarmist, but let me tell you what, even working with the governments to try to get the churches open, one of these days we're going to say, you know what, we're not going to follow your guidelines. We are believers in Christ and we have the freedom to choose where, when, and how our constitution gives us that. But they're giving us these guidelines, and of course, we don't want to, you know, um, spread this. But if they're telling us lies, we're going to have to stand up in faith one of these days and say, you know what, heaven is my home anyway. I'm going to trust God anyway. I'm going to worship God in freedom because let me say this, and you know it as you watch the news. Little by little, our basic freedoms are being taken away, and we it's all wrapped up in this COVID thing. So be careful. Look at those things that I told you, and Saturday night I'll give you some more information. But my dear ladies, I look forward to this day and to be with you. You sent me some uh, questions the other night. There was a lady that was very distressed and uh, went to get help, and I hear that she's better. She was suicidal, I understand, but after hearing the program, she decided to go for help, and she's doing really good. And that's what happens when we turn to Jesus. Tonight, I want you to be confident in God. Not in me, not in that church. Somebody says, well, you know, do I have to be baptized to go to heaven? And I said, no, the thief on the cross was not baptized, right? Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. But you know, baptism, and for us Pentecostals, we believe in immersion. We believe it should be done after you make a personal uh, confession of your faith and become born again so that you know what it is. And the baptism is actually your first sermon Act it out. You're telling people the old person is going under the waters of baptism and coming back alive, a new person in Jesus Christ. So it doesn't save you, but if you're not going to die the next day, I think you better be baptized. I think it's a wonderful experience. For one thing, it shows full surrender. You're going under the water completely, full surrender to God so God the Holy Spirit can be big in you and live his life through you. Okay, so we want to learn about being confident. And tonight, I hope you will understand this. As I was meditating on this, I thought, if I had a title for this devotion, I would say, God is your personal bodyguard. I've never ever been rich to have a bodyguard or need it. I wasn't that important, okay? As I get older, some of the ladies like to carry my purse when I travel. Okay, that's fine. So I've never had a bodyguard, but it must feel good to have a bodyguard. We'll talk about this. And the concept that we're going to be speaking tonight is some of you have been so wounded, so mistreated, that you can't trust anybody to be a bodyguard. But tonight I want to change. I want you to decide. I want to change. I'm going to have to put my trust in somebody to be my body, God, and I hope you'll find, as I minister to you, that God is the most trustworthy bodyguard. Here are the verses that you can look up during the week, and, you know, there's some psalms that are my favorite, so just jot down Psalm 23, Psalm 27, Psalm 91, for these times are wonderful. Just read it every day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And, you know, Psalm 23, Psalm 27, and Psalm 91 are about my favorite. Okay, but here are the scriptures for Bible Scramble. Number one, Philippians 1, 6. 
Philippians 1, 6. Number two, Proverbs 14, 26. Proverbs 14, 26. Number three, Deuteronomy 3, 31, sorry, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Number four, Psalm 27, 1. Number five, Proverbs 3, 26. Proverbs 3, 26. Number six, Romans 8, 12. Romans 8, no, Romans 8, 1 and 2, sorry. Romans 8, 1 and 2. Number seven, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Number 8. Psalm 37, 7. Psalm 37, 7. Number 9. Joshua 1, 7 and 9. Joshua 1, 7 and 9. Number 10, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And you know, when I said that the Bible is our only source, you can read commentaries on certain scriptures, but if you're going to believe something, it has to be in the Word of God. And so if you don't have a Bible, call us and we'll get one to you. Also, our members, graduation Sunday is this Sunday, and if you would like to order the souvenir shirts that the t-shirt company, this Christian company, is making for our graduates, call Carol, give your size. It would be great if the whole family can do that. It's $10 each, but it helps that company that's been so good to us to stay uh, in business. So I pray that you will do that. They also have face masks for the different schools. They have... Um, mugs for the, for the different schools. So, you know, if you got some extra money, help them out. Maybe you don't need it, but you can buy it as a gift for somebody else. And the mugs are about $8 each, and the face masks that are reusable are $10 each, and they're really cute. So I hope you call in for your orders. Okay, now we're going to be talking about God, our very present bodyguard, and talking about being confident. Let me ask you, because so many of you have been so hurt, so disappointed, even from a child. It so hurts me when I hear that, you know, some of you say that from the time you were little, you were told you were unwanted, you know, and uh, you were treated like you were unwanted. But God says, no, you're very special. I had a plan for you. And so maybe it's late in life that you're finding out a plan. But I said, you don't have to worry about these end time things coming. Because you're a little baby in Christ, you know how we take care of the babies? You don't have to know a lot. You just trust God and you're going to heaven whenever Jesus comes. You will. Because all we have to do is put our trust in the Lord and say, God, I want to forsake my sins. I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me. I made a mess of my life. I really am sick and tired of the kind of life I've lived. And so please forgive me and invite him to come in. Your name is written in that Lamb's Book of Life. And when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, you're going to be going up with all the rest of us. Those are older Christians now. They've got a lot of problems because they've not maybe been obedient to the Lord. But because you're a baby, God sees you and treats you very gently like we do a little baby. So don't get so worried about the end times. What your biggest concern should be and everybody's biggest concern is, am I ready? 
there's going to be, you know, the Bible says there's going to be, Satan is going to be the deceiver. So we see this. Older Christians can see the deception now in the news and everything, you know, and we don't know who to believe. In the end times, it says he's going to be the great deceiver. So we know we're living in those times, but we have the truth, the Bible, and we need to live according to it. So I pray that you will really pay attention tonight. First of all, those of you who have received the Lord, for those of you who have not yet made up your mind, don't put it off till tomorrow. You'll find the joy and the peace the moment you put your trust in him. He will be your companion. He'll be your friend. And he'll teach you. You're not going to know everything about the Bible. And the reason why we put our trust in the Bible, we said it was written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 men inspired by the Holy Spirit over three continents. It has tested the time. It tells from the beginning about how the world was created. It tells about the history of the world. It tells about the Messiah coming. And it tells about Jesus the Messiah did come, as was prophesied, and that he is coming back again. And that's what we're looking for, for him to come back again. So he's got the road map, and it has never failed. It has passed the test of time so we can put our faith in the Bible and the Bible alone. Now, if you put your trust in the Lord... And I trust that you have. Many of you have. I want you to remember Philippians 1.6. Because it tells us, and St. Paul is saying, I am confident that who, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day that Jesus comes. So the burden of you trying to make it to heaven is a worry that you don't have to have. Your concern and your decisions need to be about you putting your trust in him who will then complete the work that he starts in you. You don't have to fix yourself. You need to choose to let Jesus fix you because he went to the cross. He is the truth. He knows how to fix you. So once you receive Christ, you know, just ask him every day. Lead and guide me. I want to serve you. And you're going to start up a little baby. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to stumble and fall, but pick yourself up because he who had begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's his responsibility as long as you keep trusting him. Okay. Then in Romans 8, 31, I love this verse because it tells us that if God be for us, who can be against us? Who's against you? Is it a person that's against you right now that you're having a problem with? Or is it a circumstance? Maybe you lost your job and you're discouraged and you're in despair. If God be for you, nobody can be against you. No situation can be against you. He owns everything. He's God Almighty. He made the sun, moon, and stars. He made all the trees, all the animals, and then he made you. And he's got a plan for you. If God be for us. Let me ask you this question, however. Are you for God? That makes a difference in a person's life. If you're for God, nobody can be against you. But the question is, are you for God? Because he is for you. You know, my father used to be a, when he was a young man, before he met my mom, my mom said she wouldn't have married him if she had seen him in his sumo outfit. He was a young man who was captain of the Maui High football team. And then they saw that, you know, the school and some other people saw that he had some very good skills in ath- as an athlete. So they recruited him as a sumo wrestler because he was big and fat. And he was very skillful, too, you know. I don't know why none of us inherited that. But, you know, I felt very confident because I had a very strong dad. He was not mean. He didn't have a mean bone. But, you know... 
God is wanting to protect us, and he is our heavenly father. He's strong. And I'm going to tell you some of the scriptures that will, will help you to learn this. And he says that we are more than conquerors. More than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror. You're not just a winner in life or in your circumstances. You're more than a conqueror if you are in Jesus. In the 37th verse of Romans 8, it says that in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If there is a very favorite chapter of mine, it's Romans chapter 8. Romans is the theological book of the entire 66 books in the Bible. It tells us who God is, who man is, what God did, and so forth. It tells us the plan of salvation, and it teaches us the right things to believe. So look to Romans chapter 8. It starts by you know, telling us, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And the law of the life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You are free. And just receive that. Just say, Thank you, Jesus. I believe in you, and I am free. Be free tonight. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Say, Jesus, I want to be free tonight because he's a very present help. And so he tells us that we are more than conquerors. And, you know, I had this evangelist. Some of you know R.W. Shambaugh. And he was a backslidden soldier in the Second World War. And at a street meeting where Sister Brostick, our founder, was having a street meeting, he uh, stopped and he recommitted his life to the Lord and became a world-famous evangelist. But he uses this example. He says, you know, uh, these two guys were going to be in a multi-million dollar boxing match. So for months they had to train, you know, and they had to go on a strict diet, they had to exercise, they had to run, they had to lift weights, they had to, you know, practice and all of that for months. Well, one of them had a wife that, you know, um, she didn't really like to do anything but watch TV and eat her chocolate and cookies, and she wasn't very careful about her diet. Uh, she was young, I guess, and so she was just enjoying life, and she was lying every day on the sofa watching TV while her husband was out running and, and pumping weights and doing all of that. Then the day of the fight came, so they went to the arena, and she was sitting right on the edge, and the boxing match went on and on and on and on, and I don't know how many rounds it was. But she was cheering and cheering and cheering and cheering. And sure enough, her husband won. And so, you know, they lifted up his hand and he was there. And, and they had a ceremony and they had this million-dollar check. And they gave him the million-dollar check. So he was holding the million-dollar check like this. And then all the festivities were over and they had to go. And he turned and there was his wife sitting over there. And he handed the million-dollar check to her. She was more than a conqueror. Get it? She didn't do anything. She just trusted in her husband. And watched him train, go through all of that, while she ate her chocolate, watched TV, and she got the million dollars. Well, when well, we're more than conquerors, really, Jesus said, I went to the cross. I took the beatings. Refuse the beatings of people. The things that they say, with their mouth they beat you up, or with other things. Refuse it in Jesus' name. He is your refuge and strength. He is your personal bodyguard. Call on him. Do you know that when you're covered with the blood of Jesus and you're a child of God, God's going to protect you. He really is your bodyguard and you're more than a conqueror because we're going to close by you looking at Isaiah 41, 10, one of my favorite scriptures. And I was going through some deep trials at one time when people were trying to pull me down. They were trying to do things to this church and so forth, and said mean things, all lies, but mean things. And the Lord says, let me fight your battle. Do not try to fight this battle. 
And then I looked at the scripture in Isaiah 41, 10. I started off with that. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Are you walking in fear because of somebody or your circumstance, your finances? You know, somebody called me today crying and she was very distressed. Fear not. If you've chosen Jesus, now if you didn't fear, you know, choose Jesus, well, you're on your own. That's why I say it's silly not to give your life to Jesus. You've lived this long, messed up your life. You don't know the way. Jesus said, I'm the way. I want to be your friend. I want to help you. And when you're in me, you don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear anything. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Who is your God? Choose you this day. Whom you're going to serve? Who is your God? I think it only makes sense that we make God Almighty our God. He makes many promises. We can know him by his word. We know his character. We know his power. We know his plan. We know his promises. Who else does that? Nobody else. He says, I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow, I fed on that so many times when things were done and mean things, you know. And I said, God, you're my God. You're going to strengthen me. I'm going to make it through this trial. You're going to be my God. Okay, that was great. Then somebody told me, read on to the 13th verse, and it was kind of scary. But let me say this. God is a righteous God. On the scale of justice, there's right and wrong. God is always right. Satan is always wrong. And we're sometimes in between. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. We're all sinners. But God is absolutely right all the time. And he says, I will take care of unrighteousness. He is absolutely, somebody told me that, you know, absolute cold is not zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's minus 273.16 is absolute cold. Think about God's absolute righteousness. Absolute, beyond what we think. So he says he's going to deal with unrighteousness. And then the 11th, 12th, and 13th verses, it says, Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Anybody mad at you without a cause, want to disgrace you, they're going to be disgraced. They shall be as nothing. When I read that, I said, Oh, God, I don't want them to be nothing. He says, I deal with righteousness. I will deal with them. Don't tell me what to do. They can repent and be absolved of their unrighteousness. But if they don't repent, I am going to deal with them. So when somebody's really mean to you, just know that if they don't confess their sins and get it under the blood of Jesus, you may not see it happen in this life, but there's a hell waiting for them. And if they were really mean, they're going to the worst part of hell. The Bible teaches that there are degrees of punishment there. And so we think about these terrible criminals. They're going to be in the hottest, most awful place of hell. But being in hell really means being separated from love, being separated from God. And so we better be on his side. They should be as nothing because God is righteous. And those who strive with you will perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing. I know you're not that mean that you would like your enemies, no matter how bad they are, to be nothing. But let me say this. God is a righteous God, more righteous than you are. So let him handle it. Let the fear of God come on unrighteous people who do evil because they're going to have to face a God who is just and he will take care 
of justice. He says, as a non-existent thing they're going to be. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, I will help you. Do you need help tonight? Just close your eyes. I want you to see Jesus reaching out his hand. And if you're brave enough, if you're alone, maybe you, you can be brave. If you're in a room full of people, you may not want to do this, but reach out and grab his hand. He will carry you through. Father, they're lonely people who are struggling. They're fearful, but you said, I want to be their God. So I pray they will open their hearts and their lives to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Do a creative work, Lord, as they say, yes, Jesus, I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being scared. Please accept me into your family. Be my father. Be my bodyguard. Be my friend. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, I sense that people are feeling that love from God. Don't be so proud as to turn away from him. Your pride has hurt you enough. Humble yourself and say, Jesus, here I am. Please help me. Please be my friend. I will put my confidence in you because you've never disappointed anybody. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me from my sins. Invite, I invite you into my heart. Write my name in your book that if you should come tonight or next month or whenever, I will be ready. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray the peace of God right now, wherever you are, let the peace of God that passes all understanding fill you. Say, Lord, give me your peace. Give me your peace. Give me your peace. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who are in groups and will have a discussion, I thought a good discussion question could be, do you remember somebody who trusted you and you let them down? You made promises. It could be your children. It could be your husband. Could be your best friend. Well, discuss about that and see if you've resolved that. And if they're not around, ask Jesus to forgive you for not being trustworthy. You will be once Jesus lives in you. Have a good evening. God bless you. Tomorrow night is youth night, so we'll see you tomorrow night. And just remember, God loves you just the way you are. And I love you too. Blessings. Bye.